So um, we're 56 million specimens, and, all, and again, most of those are bugs. Um, a lot of those are tied up in tray, uh, drawers, and so I'm going to talk about the technology we're 
just about finished developing for capturing images in drawers and how it can be used in for other types of collections. We're not the first to do this. Um, NC State, probably you all know, has been looking at drawer digitization for a long time using gigaparent technology. We're trying to, to, to find an alternative way to do it. <coughs> um, when we first started looking at this drawer digitization workflow, um, we, we tried to go the gigapan route. People familiar with gigapan technology? Yeah, it's mounting a camera on a robot that takes lots and lots of very images of a very discrete area, stitching those images together, and you have a huge, highly zoomable image because you've got a bunch of small scale, obviously small scale, small images stitched together. Um, the next route we looked at was using a, a CNC machine, a computer numerical control that simply puts a camera on a kind of an industrial quality, industrial grade system that moves across an X and Y coordinate to capture images of um, these drawers. And what we finally focused on is what I'll call parallel robot. I don't know if these were robot. <laughs> <laughs> And we wanted this system to be, uh, um, well, here's just some background on, on, on the system we arrived at. It's a custom symbol robot with aluminum frames, four pairs covered by fiber arms, not to be able to um, <clears throat> Things that you might find interesting in the camera we're using, uh, I just call them simple industrial cameras, nothing fancy, it's just a, it's basically a lens or a, a, a <coughs> image capturing chip that's connected directly to Computer, um, and we're using a telecentric lens on that camera. Um, anyone familiar with telecentricity and how it affects cameras? Okay, I don't want to have a slide coming up. Uh, and a simple LED display. <coughs> the other part of developing hardware, of course, is getting the software to run it. Um, and that's what the software engineers have been working on, and it will simply detect the edges of a drawer um, and capture multiple images of the drawer. Okay, the telecentricity, so working with engineers, they have a very different perspective on what's uh, acceptable rate of error than what we did. And to put a software system together that's going to capture images and stitch those images together, you have to use, according to them, you arrive at using a telecentric lens. A telecentric lens is not, nothing more than having, it's a fixed focal length lens with an aperture opening, um, the amount of um, area you can capture is the exact same as the aperture opening. Since all the light rays come in, I hope I can explain this properly. The reason I became a biologist is I didn't like trying to learn. <laughs> <laughs> the, the light rays come in parallel, and so there is no <clears throat> magnification difference in an image. Okay, and you also do not get this distortion around the edges like you get with a normal edge. So a simple example with two blocks. Take this image with a normal camera, you see two blocks. If you want to measure this distance and this distance, you're going to get your different differences. In order to correct for that, you're going to have to know the depth between those two images. A telecentric lens does not require that. Everything is in the same focus, the same magnification. So you can take a photo of that image, and everything is the same size. Okay. So, um, we start. The other reason I want to get involved with this and we started talking about doing drawers and I wanted to do crayfish, I thought it would be pretty easy to adapt the system that's developed for drawers to do multiple individuals at one time with an automated system. And of course, if we can do crayfish, we can also do it with fish. Um, this, these are basically just a trial run I did last week with fish. It worked fine. Um, <clears throat> just some images here of what this thing looks like. This is a telecentric lens. This is an industrial camera, the simple little white device that sits on the end of the lens. <coughs> These are the arms and the motors that run this thing. Um, just some more information about it. Custom design, um, precision machine hardware, <coughs> but it is over-the-counter stuff. Okay, it's not stuff that you have to go to a machine shop and have custom made. These are all things bought over the counter, put together. Um, <clears throat> the industrial camera and its low distortion tells us it lens, the 1.2 magnification, the working distance here, and it's a 3 megapixel camera. I was amazed. I 
the resolution of a camera that seemed that low. We're all used to now double digit megapixel resolution on our digital cameras. A three megapixel tele centric lens does an excellent job, which you see in some of the images. Uh, we've got a 24 by 24 work platform, so that's going to give users a lot of space to use to get as many specimens as they can under that work area. Um, and the other part, of course, which I'm not going to really go into, is the, is the software that's going to run the system. It was developed with a shareware program called OpenCV. Easy to use, automated. If we have 56 million specimens, we've got to take out as much time as we can in every single place. If you can put 10, 12, 15 fish down and get it with one sweep of this robot, to me that seems like an incredible time savings, rather than doing an individual fish at a time. Um, then these, all these raw images are stitched together and it produces a very um, high resolution 2D image. Now, then, this sounds very complicated, a very uh, high-tech system developed by engineers. Of course, the next question is how much is this going to cost? Um, and that's a big part of it. And one of the, when we submitted the proposal to NSF, we said we would, we would make a system to provide to the 22 institutions that was affordable. And so I'll just touch on that. Um, we're not, you know, we're not doing that much new here. There are other technologies out there for scanning drawers, as I mentioned before. Um, the Smart Drive, folks look at Smart Drive, this English company that's basically used, taking the CNC machine and used it for capture of drawer data. Um, in, in many cases, that cost is just too high, especially for smaller institutions. Um, I didn't hear this directly, but uh, our head PI said that he heard the great one the cost for their, their system is about thirty to $35,000. Our cost to other um, invert net institutions is going to come in around five thousand bucks. That's for the hardware and the computer. Okay. <coughs> the interface is going to be very user friendly, and I, mean, I have to admit, my definition of user friendly and a software engineer's definition of user friendly <laughs> are going to be very different. Um, they're sure <coughs> point and click. Uh, we were showing us the other day, you can hook a joystick to the computer, you can basically drive the robot the arm over the computer, mark your corner points of the area you want to scan, set them, 
once we end up with a single PNG image, then a lot of the work that needs to be done on the, the back side of that, and that's what um, the second half of the team is looking on using, taking that single stitched image, then breaking it up into individual files per specimen, and breaking that out, and then taking the data, capturing the metadata off of that. Um, <clears throat> What we want to do in the future, of course, then, is continually refining your workflows. There's always room for improvement and where you can save time. Uh, and automate the digitization process in other areas. And then the other part of ours was, was 3D reconstruction. So the next step is basically going to be putting a, a tiltful pan head or pan tilt head on the end of that robot so um, it can start to collect images from the side. And the whole point, I mean, the whole challenge for doing drawers without getting into those drawers and pulling specimens out is the, the metadata is usually under the bug. That's a huge issue. And so if we can take angled shots, stitch those images together, the engineers are telling us that we will have no problem stitching those images together to collect that data. The fish example is pretty straightforward. It's going to take someone to pull the label out, pull one fish out, and want to do multiple fish from a jar, pull them out, set the label, set them up in that pan. To me, that seems like a Pretty minimal time investment. Hit the, hit, the, hit the start button, capture that image, put the specimens back in the jar, put the label back in the jar, move on to your next batch. To get the, to get the <coughs> data with the bugs under the, the pin specimen is, is something that uh, is the next phase for the 3D reconstruction. Um, this is our website. Some of you may or may not have been there. Um, to see, we've got tutorials, video tutorials about how to do. Um, slides and files um, using the flatbed scanner and other resources. And there's lots of other collaborators that are working on inverting apps, a list of, of those individuals at other institutions and of course um, NSF. And one more note, um, this, this seems overly complex. When we see a picture of a robot like that. And <laughs> do not Use, do not joke about over-engineering something to a room full of engineers. <laughs> <laughs>